It does not take much research to learn that magnetic reversals on Earth happen hundreds of thousands of years apart. So what is the excursion? How does it differ from a full magnetic reversal? We have been examining the effects of magnetic changes on Earth, potential cataclysms that may arise, but there are those studying another form of great change during these magnetic events, a slower version of extinction, an appearance of new species, and which doesn't require a single short-term catastrophic event. A recent paper in the world's number one geophysics journal highlights this disaster that looms on the geological horizon, but it's not something that happens hundreds of thousands of years apart. We call them excursions, magnetic excursions, which is, you know, a term that's well integrated in the literature now, and it, these are very short-lived reversals, but they're associated with uh, minima in field intensity, and it's the minima in field intensity that are uh, implicated because when you have low field strength, you enhance UVR. So unlike the full cron events, the full magnetic reversals, these excursions are very short. They happen relatively quickly and return, but they include the dreaded minima of magnetosphere strength. So this begs the question, how often do they occur, and when, oh when, was the last one? Well, as we head back in time from today, there are a number of very well-documented excursions, magnetic excursions. One is at uh, 40,000 years, which is called the Le Champ excursion. And then as we head further back in time, we have another very well-documented one, which is called the Blake excursion at about 115 thousand years ago and then we have one that's uh, at 190,000 years ago and then there are a number of other excursions that are not so well documented and uh, <clears throat> there's one at about 13,000 another one at about 32,000 so there are a bunch of them the reason why they're difficult to document is that as I said at the beginning they have short durations, so um, it's difficult to record them in geologic archives. Would it be possible that the Mono Lake or Lake Mungo excursions uh, have evidence that is there, and it, because, you know, for the reasons you've described, it's just too hard to find or we haven't found it yet, to, to call it a more, a, a more recognizable event? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's the case. I mean, the... You know, although the first magnetic excursion was uh, identified, um, what, 1967, I think? So it's, it's been a long time since the first excursion was actually discovered in the Geologic Archive. But their discovery is fairly fortuitous because they are so, they're so brief. You know, you, you know sediments, they, they're recorded in some sediments, and they're recorded also by volcanic rocks. But you have to be very lucky to catch, you know, that there's an eruption of a volcano at the right time or that the sediments are deposited just at the right time to record the excursion. So that's why the recordings are um, not very common. You know, where we don't visualize a blitzkrieg process of extinction associated with UVR. And uh, we state this in the paper, that we're looking at a process that affects a population over multiple generations. And it's related to the way in which UVR stimulates mutations that eventually affect the genome. So it's not, I mean, it's not a blitzkrieg process related to UVR that causes these extinctions. It's a progressive process that becomes important over over multiple generations, perhaps over a thousand years, when the field strength was low. And, uh, you know, I think one of the key points, too, is the uh, issue about the aryl hydrocarbon receptor that differs in Neanderthal and in modern humans. And what role that plays in the susceptibility of UVR for Neanderthal. Would it be completely out of range to suggest that 
whenever it is this happens again on Earth, because it would be kind of nuts to think it, this is never going to happen again. When this happens again on Earth, is there reason to suspect that perhaps modern humans are in a better position to handle the ultraviolet changes? Well, uh, certainly modern humans managed to survive uh, 40,000 years ago when the Neanderthals died out. So they were better equipped than Neanderthals to survive the high UV environment. So uh, that's, that's true. 